Hey there, fellow travelers. In a 1963 letter, we find this remarkable line from Tolkien. Frodo indeed failed. What did he mean by that? Is there a deeper message that Tolkien himself took away from writing the scene of Frodo's failure? What bits of wisdom can we glean from Tolkien's commentary on Frodo's failure at Mount Doom? In this video, we'll dive into these questions and seek to understand what deeper truths about mercy, justice, and suffering Tolkien took away from the stark reality of Frodo's failure. Before we dive in, you can read the whole letter for free at the Tolkien Estates website. I also recommend picking up a copy of J.R.R. Tolkien's letters. It's essential reading for those who want to go deeper into the heart and mind of Tolkien. Check out the notes for links to both. So this is something that Tolkien himself saw as very important, even 10 years after the publication of The Lord of the Rings. For Tolkien, in writing this chapter, it became clear that Frodo would not be capable of voluntarily destroying the ring. Tolkien sees the event as central to the whole theory of true nobility and heroism that we find in Lord of the Rings. Initially, Tolkien doesn't mince words about Frodo's failure. To quote Tolkien himself, Frodo indeed failed as a hero, as conceived by simple minds. He did not endure to the end. He gave in, ratted. However, in Tolkien's view, while Frodo indeed failed in a strict sense, we need to take two important things into account. First, this strict sense ignores the complexity of reality. While it's easy to look at the scene in an isolated way and from the outside, it's altogether different to be inside of it to be the man in the, in the arena, as it were. Second, as Tolkien says, it's easy to overlook that strange element in the world that we call pity and mercy. For Tolkien, it's essential that we look on others with pity and mercy whenever we assess the morality of their actions, because the ultimate judge, God, looks in this way. At the same time, when we look upon another in judgment, we have to be aware that in the end, we are unworthy to do so in and of ourselves. From here, Tolkien asserts that Frodo may have failed, but it was not a moral failure. To quote, I do not think that Frodo's was a moral failure. At the last moment, the pressure of the ring would reach its maximum. Impossible, I should have said, for anyone to resist, certainly after long possession, months of increasing torment, and when starved and exhausted. Frodo had done what he could and spent himself completely as an instrument of providence and achieved a situation in which the object of his quest could be achieved. Tolkien actually says that it was precisely because of Frodo's humility and his patience and mercy toward Gollum that he was given mercy, that is, mercy with a capital M, a special grace of mercy. His individual failure was redressed by providence, and his mission in the end was successful. So at what point would Tolkien have asserted Frodo's moral failure? Tolkien says, Moral failure can only be asserted, I think, when a man's effort or endurance falls short of his limits, and the blame decreases as that limit is closer approached. Nonetheless, I think it can be observed in history and experience that some individuals seem to be placed in sacrificial positions, situations or tasks that for perfection of solution demand powers beyond their utmost limits, even beyond all possible limits for an incarnate creature in a physical world in which a body may be destroyed or so maimed that it affects the mind and will. Judgment upon any such case should then depend on the motives and disposition with which he started out, and should weigh his actions against the utmost possibility of his powers, all along the road to whatever proved the breaking point. For Tolkien, we are finite creatures with finite limits. We can only endure so much suffering. Furthermore, our will can be weakened by constant temptation or torment. In such a case, judgment has to depend upon where we started out and our intent when we had the greatest clarity of mind. In other words, our actions in any given moment don't always reveal our truest selves. As Tolkien sees it, Frodo undertook his quest out of love, to save the world he knew from disaster at his own expense if he could, and also in complete humility, acknowledging that he was wholly inadequate to the task. His real contract was only to do what he could, to try to find a way, and to go as far on the road as his strength of mind and body allowed. He did that. I do not myself see that the breaking of his mind and will under demonic pressure after torment was any more a moral failure than the breaking of his body would have been, say, by being strangled by Gollum or crushed by a falling rock. 
this is where it becomes clearest. Our minds and wills are capable of being crushed by various sufferings and torments, just like our bodies are capable of being crushed by a falling rock. Either way, someone may be diverted from a mission they have undertaken with good intent. In neither case, for Tolkien, should we judge them severely. I find so much beauty and wisdom in Tolkien's words. We're so often quick to judge others instead of looking upon them with the eyes of mercy. I know I am. But for Tolkien, mercy is actually more powerful, because it leans upon the only just judgment there truly is, the merciful judgment of God. From Frodo's individ individual failure, we can see that because of his merciful attitude towards the contemptible Gollum, he obtained help from on high, you catastrophic help, at the moment when it was most needed. It's a reminder that mercy and love are greater than judgment, not just in an emotional sense, but in the sense that they are truly more powerful and constructive. For me, it makes me want to be more, more merciful and patient when I read this passage. Thanks for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to this channel. Also, I'd love to continue the conversation in the comments below. If you don't already have a copy, make sure to pick up the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien for more incredible insights. Highly recommend this volume of Tolkien's works. Also, please support my work here at the Tolkien Road by visiting truemisspress.com, becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tolkien Road, or leaving me a tip right here on YouTube. Once again, you can read this letter for free if you go to the Tolkien Estates website. I'll have that link in the comments below. It's a really magnificent letter. There's much more to it than what I covered here. Um, really interesting comments about Gollum that are of a similar nature to what he has to say about Frodo. Uh, just highly recommend that letter in particular. And really, the Tolkien Estate has put together a great website over there with lots of very interesting resources, uh, pictures, videos. So you really need to go check that out. I'll link to the Tolkien Estate website in the notes as well. All right, everybody. Once again, please support my work here at the Tolkien Road. And thanks for watching. Until next time, the road goes ever on.